Let us introduce you to this fellow right over here, Lance Corporal William Kyle Carpenter, uh, Marine Corps, retired, the youngest living Medal of Honor recipient and author of a brand new book. It's called You Are Worth It, Building a Life Worth Living. And the story uh, you told us earlier, Kyle, is, is so powerful because, you know, you, you, you see in the movies where uh, you're in combat, grenade comes in, what are you going to do? You're the guy who actually jumped on the grenade. And you saved the life of that guy right there. But it changed your life forever. Yes, sir. Um, so we can look at this two different ways. Two years ago when I started writing about my journey, or nine years ago now that I was injured. Uh, and this book is, you know, I wrote it to transcend all boundaries. I didn't want only veterans or service members or people that had been to combat mm -hmm. to only be able to take something from mm -hmm. it. I wanted anyone to pick it up and not only be able to uh, understand it, but to take those lessons from it. And uh, many of the lessons of perspective that I discuss uh, came because I was forced to search for those silver linings through those long, dark, and painful nights in the hospital. But now, you know, I'm so thankful from don't hide your scars to call your mom mm -hmm. that I've had these amazing experiences with this bonus round that I'm living, mm -hmm. you know, to tell people that it's uh, about perspective and how you look at things and that you can truly come back better and stronger. You might be physically, mentally, or emotionally different and that's completely okay. But you really truly can come back better and stronger than you were before whatever knocked you down. And not only come back, but come back smiling. Tell us about that day. What happened? Myself and a fellow Marine, an amazing Marine and best friend, we were on top of a roof on what people would know as a, a lookout position. We call it standing post. And uh, we had taken over the compound that we were in roughly two days before. And from the moment, uh, just like every day in Afghanistan, from the moment we took it over, every day from sunup to sundown was a fight for survival and fight for our lives. November 21st, 2010, I was on top of that roof with my fellow Marine and the enemy initiated a daylight attack. Three hand grenades were thrown before the fourth one that landed in very close proximity to us. And everything came from eyewitness accounts and uh, post-blast analysis done by uh, an explosive ordnance disposal team. And so I don't remember anything leading up to the blast, but from all of that, I covered the grenade uh, that was thrown at uh, myself you and my fellow on. Marine. Yeah. I jumped on it, which I don't recommend. But, uh, <laughs> you know, now that I'm here, I'm, I'm thankful that I can, uh, you know, tell people that. We're, we're looking at some of these pictures on the screen, and, and you were telling us a couple minutes ago that you went through at least 40 different surgeries. You spent years at Walter Reed, and you mentioned a couple minutes ago having some of those dark nights in your recovery. At, at those times, at the darkest times in your life, would you have ever imagined years later you'd be here now with this amazing perspective on life? Absolutely not, and uh, I'm thankful that I didn't know any of that because, you know, this was a process, and it took time. and. So many things that I talk about at the time were experiences, mm -hmm. but with time, healing, deep thought, uh, became life lessons, and then many years later, turned into perspective. I also think it's the people that you surround yourself with, too. Absolutely. Yeah, that, Absolutely. that bring out the best in you. And when you go through something like a challenge, you appreciate all of those angels that have been in your life to help you through this. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I talk about this in the book, but, you know, to wake up and be completely disoriented and very surprised that you're alive and able to wake up, uh, you know, I open my one eye I had left. And I had gone unconscious five weeks earlier on a hot, dusty rooftop in Afghanistan. And I wake up, and there's snow building outside on my window pane. I'm in a military hospital. I have no idea where. But I open my eye, and I'm looking at the hospital room wall in front of my bed. And there's, uh, it took me a few seconds to realize what they were, but it was five Christmas stockings that my mom had hung decorating my wall, hopefully and lovingly preparing for me to wake up. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the moment I woke up, you know, for my dad, keeping his 
hand on my left ankle while I was hallucinating, you know, just to try to keep me in reality because that was the only thing that wasn't injured on me. Mm -hmm. You know, to now, them standing right back there behind they're the camera, here, here uh, the studio. you know, it absolutely is who you surround yourself with. And I'm just so thankful that from my family to the incredible staff at Walter Reed, to my fellow Marines, and even down the road to my college professors that cared about me and worked with me while I tried to figure out all this craziness going on in life. You know, so many people uh, have helped me get to where I am today. Mm -hmm.